Welcome back to Frank Lloyd Wright. My name is John Lobel, and we are surveying the career and the architecture of America's most important architect, Frank Lloyd Wright. So we're going to look now at two buildings that Wright did in the early 1900s at the same time he was doing his prairie style houses. Wright had very little opportunity to do buildings other than houses. There are very few of them, but these are uh, two important ones. So the first one is the Larkin Building in Buffalo, New York, and it's an office building for a mail order soap company. So you would send in your envelope with a few pennies and they would mail you soap. And it was a very prosperous business. And Wright did this uh, quite interesting building for them. And well, actually, before we go inside, let's just look. And one of the things unique about this building is that there are no classical details. It's all abstract geometry. So if you take away classical columns, Doric, Ionic, and Corinthian, Gothic arches, what do you, what do, you do? And Wright's suggesting you do a bold geometric forms. This is the interior opening up to a skylight above. And here we see in the plan that Wright has a two parts to the building, a major form and a minor one, and the entrance is in between, balconies running around, and a skylight in the middle. Here we see that in isometric. We're going to see that as an important pattern in Wright's work. It's also interesting to historians how this building evolved. We notice in the corners, in the finished version on the right, the stairs and the air handling ducts are on the outside. And here in the beginning, they're on the inside, and Wright pulls them out. And so historians are very interested in how that develops. It's the first centrally air-conditioned building. And so uh, he had all this AC equipment in the bottom. It used, in the basement, it used pulling the air over water for evaporative cooling. And then a whole system of how the air moves through the building. And in that sense, it's compared by historians to the architect Louis Kahn's medical towers. And both of these buildings are sort of diagrams of how the air is moved through the building. He developed for this building steel furniture, first use of office steel furniture. Now, same time, he does a building called Unity Temple. It's a Unitarian church near where he lived in Oak Park in uh, Illinois, near Chicago. And remarkable thing about this building is its pioneering use of poured-in-place exposed concrete. And Wright used to say, nobody realizes it, but this whole building is one piece of this uh, poured-in-place concrete. Very geometric, very cubist, and then the spectacular interior, again, opening to skylights above, balconies running around. And here's the plan of the building. Again, we've got a major space, minor space, entrance in between. Balconies running around, skylight in the middle, and then these hollow columns that carry the air. In section, we see the, uh, we see the skylight. And then uh, he describes this building as breaking the box. So the stairs are pulled out to the corners, so the inside is no longer has these corners. And we see these plans are quite similar. The building used slip forming. So as the building is going up, the formwork gets slid up to save money. But this, this becomes a very important technique in contemporary concrete uh, construction. You can see as these forms slipped up and they would pour more concrete, you get these wavy lines in here that are still there in the building. And here are these skylights above, very similar to Mondrian's art. We'll look at that again later. So the Larkin Building and Unity Temple share the same pattern. Here's a thought for you. Do we see this pattern in other Wright buildings? Something for you to think about. 